Early game players often find it hard to understand how to get new characters and weapons in Genshin. There are many different ways to get them, some of which are quite obscure, so let's demystify all of this. We'll talk through characters first since they're the most important part and then cover weapons at the end. Genshin has dozens of characters, each of which is unique, and for many people, collecting and playing around with these characters is a huge part of the appeal of the game. Characters are broadly categorized as 5-star for those considered rare and 4-star for those considered common. While the 5-star characters are intended to be stronger, there are many 4-stars who are just as powerful, and others are very useful in their specific niches. With enough investment and the right team compositions, even characters considered least powerful can be incredibly strong. So, let's look at the different ways to get new characters. First, let's look at the Traveler. Genshin's main character is unique because they are the only playable character in the game who has access to more than just one element. To unlock a new Traveler element, you need to put them in your party, interact with the Statue of the Seven and choose the Resonate option. This will switch your Traveler to use the element associated with that statue's region. Monsa gives you Animo Traveler, Leo gives you Geo, Inazuma gives Electro and so on. The catch is that Traveler can only use one element at a time, and that you have to level talents and constellations for each element separately. Character level, weapon and artifacts are shared across all elements, so some investment does carry over. The different versions of the Traveler are often underrated. For example, Animal Traveler is a lot more useful than many people think, so it's worth trying them out for yourself to see which one you like, or maybe pick one with less use an element you otherwise lack so that you can try some different teams. Next, there are a handful of standard characters that everyone gets for free at the very start of the game. The first three of these are unlocked very early through the story itself, Amber, Kaya and Lisa. You are also guaranteed several more as an incentive to try some other parts of the game. You get Barbara once you reach Adventure Rank 18, Noelle is guaranteed to be obtained from the Novice Wishes, and both Shangling and Kole are available from the early levels of the Spiral Abyss. These characters are absolutely worth getting, partly because having one of each of the elements is extremely useful for making flexible teams, but also just because some of them are surprisingly powerful. Zhangling in particular is one of the best characters in the game, so definitely go ahead and get them. Every once in a while you also get a free copy of a 4-star character through a limited time event, my favourite kind of reward. Most of the time, these events provide a specific character. For example, when Sumeru was first released, there was an Aranara carving event which provided Kole as a reward. The annual Lantern Rite Festival also provides a free 4-star character. Everyone gets to pick one character from the list of characters who are from the Liyue region. This is particularly great since it lets you choose to either get a new character that you're missing or obtain a constellation for one you already have. I'll explain constellations in an upcoming video about leveling your characters, but suffice to say that they are an important way to make your characters more powerful. These free event characters are infrequent, but it's a good idea to make sure you take part in the events to unlock them. Everything we've talked about so far provides a fairly limited roster of characters which covers all the bases. It's possible to complete the game with all of these characters alone, but that's only a small fraction of the ones available in the game, and it's lacking any of the 5-star characters, which leads us to the main way to obtain characters in Genshin. Genshin uses a gacha system, known in-game as wishing, in which you spend an in-game currency to receive a random selection of in-game items, similar to buying a pack of Pokemon cards or to loot boxes in other games. This currency can be bought using real-world money, though we obtain a decent amount through gameplay as well. There's a built-in pity system within the Genshin gacha, which puts a maximum limit on the amount of currency you spend before getting a fancy 5-star character. But because this is a fairly complicated system, I'll explain it in detail in another video. Important thing to note here is that Genshin is fairly generous with the amount of currency which you get by playing alone, so even free-to-play players tend to collect quite the roster of characters. A final way to obtain some of the characters is a shop called Paimon's Bargains. Whenever you use the gacha system, you obtain some coins in a secondary currency as an extra reward alongside the characters and weapons you get. This extra currency can be spent in a separate shop called Paimon's Bargains. 
This shop contains a number of different rare items, but the most valuable are the characters you can buy. There are currently 12 characters who can be bought from this shop, made available 2 characters at a time in a constant 6 month rotation as shown here. Note that some of the starter characters are available from this shop. Constellations for these characters are hard to come by elsewhere, so if you decide to use them in the long run, it is essential to buy them from Paimon's Bargains for you to unlock their full potential. Now, on to weapons. Genjin has even more weapons than characters, and they're obtained in a similar way. Weapons are available in 1 to 5 star categories, and unlike characters, there's a noticeable power difference between each category. Early on, you should just use whatever weapons you have available. Eventually, you'll want your best characters to have 4 or 5 star weapons because it makes a big difference in their strength. Though there are some notable exceptions where a 3 star weapon is unusually powerful, it's worth making sure you keep some copies of all the 3 star and above weapons which you receive just in case. So, how do we get weapons? We get a lot of low rarity weapons just by opening chests. Chests only ever drop 1, 2 or 3 star weapons, so for the most part they're not much use, and instead are consumed as materials to level up your more powerful weapons. However, some of those useful 3 stars I mentioned can drop from chests. For example, the white tassel is only available from a small number of chests in Liyue, and it's actually one of the best weapons available for characters like Sino. There are also a small number of weapons which we can get for free by talking to NPCs. These are also fairly underwhelming, but can be useful in early game and in some rare cases may be valuable later on. For example, the Dark Iron Sword is only available from talking to one specific shopkeeper in Liyue and can be worthwhile for some characters, until you find a better alternative. Next, there are a small number of 3 and 4 star weapons which are available by completing a quest. This includes a couple of very powerful weapons, for example, everyone gets a copy of Favonia's war bow after completing the prologue Archon quests. This is a highly valuable bow and is one of the most useful weapons for a large number of characters. These quest rewards are few and far between, so can't be really relied on to kit out all your characters, but are a welcome addition to your weapons inventory. There are also regular limited edition weapons available as a reward for completing some of the time limited events. Unlike the event characters mentioned earlier, these event weapons are unique and only available for the short duration of the event being available. If you miss the event, you miss the weapon, and since these weapons can be very strong, it's usually worth finding the time to complete these events. To give an example, the Cinnabar Spindle is only available as part of an event in early December 2021. It's the only 4 star weapon with a defense substat, and as a result, it is by far the best sword for Albedo, since all of these abilities are designed to scale based on of defense. Most options available to people who miss the event pale in comparison. We can only hope Hoyoverse decides to make these weapons available from some other source in the future. There are also two weapons currently available from fishing, one of which is a must-have for every account. The Catch is one of the best 4-star spears in the game and is ideal for many characters. The end of the line bow is decent, but there are many similar alternatives, so it stands out a little less. To obtain these weapons and their refinement materials after unlocking the fishing feature, you have to collect fish and trade them with one of the fishing association shops. The Catch is available in Endosuma, the end of the line is available in Sumeru. Fishing can be a huge pain and is disliked by a lot of people, but the catch in particular is well worth the grind. The next type of weapons are the craftable weapons. Many of these are very strong, though they're generally outclassed by the event or gacha weapons. Each one has a recipe which you need to find before you can create the weapon, often via quests or bought from a shop. If you're interested in a specific weapon, it's worth searching for a guide explaining how to get its recipe. Once you have the recipe, the main limit on how many weapons you can craft is a rare item called a billet. Each recipe requires one billet for you to craft each copy. Craftable weapons are likely to be most useful for you early on in the game, since you're much less likely to have more powerful gacha weapons, but the rarity of billets often make it difficult to decide which one to make. This is definitely one of those situations where it's best to ask for opinions from more experienced players before making any decisions. Similar to characters, the most common way to get new weapons is through the gacha system. As mentioned before, I'm working on a video dedicated to the wishing system, but in general there's two main things to keep in mind here. 
first is that the weapon banner is usually a waste of wishes. It is best avoided unless you have very deep pockets and want to splash out. Second is that since there is such a wide variety available, it's not really advisable to attempt to wish for any specific 4 star weapon. We mostly just have to trust the gacha gods to give us something useful and figure out how to make the most of what we get. When you wish on the character banners, you get a steady stream of 4 star weapons which is usually enough to provide for your characters. There are also two sets of weapons available through Paimon's Bargains. These are called Blackcliff and Royal Weapon Sets, available on alternating months. Generally speaking, they're fairly good, but usually not worth spending your currency on. They're similar power level to a typical 4-star gacha weapon, and is much more valuable to buy characters and their constellations instead. Finally, the Battle Pass weapons. If you pay for the premium version of Genjin's Battle Pass, you get to pick one of the 5 special Battle Pass weapons each patch. All 5 of these are fairly strong and well worth leveling if you happen to pay for the pass. And that's it! A large portion of the weapons and characters you will get in Genshin are determined by chance, so one major part of the game is figuring out how to work with what you got to create functional teams. This can be a challenge, since it involves a lot of trade-offs and caveats, so if you're ever unsure, please join my Twitch streams and ask for guidance, I'll be happy to help. Until next time!